bit late, but it's been a busy time, so here it is. The review of PT-658, the 2.7 American Coastal Vessel and level 38 Battle Pass reward. Let us take a closer look. First, as usual, the armament. The main armament of PT-658 is a Bofors 40mm gun at the rear and an automatic 37mm gun at the front. This 37mm gun should be familiar to the US pilots among you, and in my opinion can be ignored as a naval weapon, as it only has high explosive shells and the shell velocity doesn't match up with the Bofors. It still deals damage of course, but it is overshadowed by the perhaps famous 40mm gun at the rear. The 40mm Bofors is an excellent medium and even long range gun for coastal vessels. The high velocity and rate of fire with practically no reload are its key characteristics. It has a mix of high explosive and armor piercing shells where the belts just change this mixture. I personally still prefer the armor piercing belts in most situations, but be sure to experiment with the high explosive belts too, as in certain situations they can deal a lot of damage. All in all, a solid main armament, but the other gun armament certainly complements it very well. With two single 20mm mounts and two dual 50 cal mounts, this is quite a heavy ordnance. These are actually the secondary and tertiary weapons group, but I'll discuss them both at the same time. The 20mm Erlikon cannons are good weapons for both the anti-air and anti-ship role for a PT boat, and with two of them they're good backup weapons too, in case the main guns get knocked out. It should be noted however that a frontal 20mm gun cannot fire to the right hand side of the vessel because of the way it's mounted on the ship. So try to keep it targeted to the left of PT-658 for maximum firepower. For these guns I generally use the universal belt because 1 and 3, and 2 I mainly use them for anti-air purposes, for which the universal belt is good enough. I recommend the armor piercing belt if you really want to effectively use these guns against most surface targets. The two twin 50 cals don't need much of an explanation being solid for anti-air defense. The total gun armament of PT-658 is its strong point, but compared to the other American coastal vessels around this area it isn't too special with only one more single 20mm mount compared to PT-200 and PT-314. Then, does the explosive armament give PT-658 any advantage? Well, not really, as it has an identical loadout to PT-200 with 4 torpedoes, 16 rockets and 2 depth charges. PT-314 doesn't have these rockets. First, let's look at these torpedoes. These have a payload of 178kg of TNT, a range of 5.21 kilometers and a speed of 56 kilometers an hour. I'll be blunt, these are bad torpedoes, there's no way around it. Their low payload is already quite poor, though not insignificant, but the low speed is crippling. I've had the misfortune of having to use these torpedoes against a Chikugo, where one torpedo hit it right on the nose and didn't sink it. Now that is most certainly a worst case scenario and I do suggest you equip these torpedoes just don't expect miracles from them. Then you have the rockets in two 8 barreled launchers, both pointing forward, that cannot turn left or right. They're interesting weapons with a decent ballistic arc, but with an explosive mass of 0.79 kg of TNT, they're only ever useful against other coastal vessels, but those aren't exactly easy targets for rockets. I highly recommend at least equipping them and seeing what you can do with them. Then there are also the two depth charges. And the only reason I want to mention them is because there are only two of them, and with a payload of 136 kilograms of TNT, they're almost as reliable at picking out destroyers as torpedoes are. And again, there are just two of them, so it's not like they really add that much more of an explosive risk to your vessel. I recommend taking these with you too, just in case. Mobility-wise, PT-658 is pretty good with a top speed of 74 km an hour and good response time from the engines and rudders which is very much a theme for these American PTs, and certainly a strong point. Survivability is a weak spot, however. A large wooden hull makes PT-658, much like most PT boats of this type, rather fragile. You are pretty much guaranteed an ocean grave if you receive prolonged, accurate fire. This all influences the playstyle, of course, for which I suggest you use medium range to your advantage. Either by using ample cover and just poking in and out, or even some open water gunboating, as long as you have somewhere to retreat to when things get too hot. Stay away from close quarters when at all possible, as you just cannot last long enough in those types of fights. The 40mm Bofors is much more suited for medium range fighting anyways, 
You do, of course, run the risk of having to contend with frigates and destroyers, which BT-658 cannot face on equal terms, though it does have the armament to deal those kinds of vessels a hefty blow. All in all, BT-658 requires a bit more than just the basics. A steady hand and a quick mind will go a long way when using this vessel. So is BT-658 worth it? In my opinion, sure, go for it. It being a premium is quite nice, and it's rather early in the battle pass, so there's no real problem in getting it. Though this battle pass is almost over. And it's not the only thing you're getting out of a battle pass either. Just know that it isn't a particularly powerful vessel, and in the hands of an office it won't be too fun either. But if you're experienced with the USPT boats, then 658 should be a welcome addition to your lineup. I realize that this review came rather late, seeing as the next battle pass is just around the corner but other videos just had priority. Speaking of which, my next video project is probably going to take a while as it's something which I haven't quite done before, so please bear with me. But now, as usual, goodbye and may your seas be calm.